Hello guys and welcome to this new video. I'm here to present you the LF tools, which is the latest set of macros uh, I've been working on for the last few months. This project started as R&D I was doing with Vito and he had the idea to create these fused uh, for lens flare creation and unfortunately that uh, project is now on hold and while i hope the development will catch up in the meantime with vito's permission i'm releasing my set of macros we don't have very much of one options when it comes to lens flare inside of Fusion. We have the Boris FX Sapphire uh, Lens Flare uh, Designer, which is very good, but as you can see, it's not very cheap. I mean, uh, it comes with a lot of effects, but it's almost uh, $600, which I think it's a bit too much for me. We also have this great fuse by June, but unfortunately it only works on Fusion 9, not on Fusion 16 and Resolve. So this set is developed to be node-based and uh, this means that we have a macro for each element of the lens flare. There is no limit uh, the number of elements you can add and the way you can arrange them. There is a special mention here uh, for this tool set. I'm using a fuse by Steve Watson who was kind enough to make a special version just for me. So, uh, Steve, thank you very much for that. Let's have a look uh, at the elements one by one. The first thing that we need is going to be a background node. And now I'm working in 1920 by 1080. But keep in mind that this tool set is uh, resolution independent, which means that whatever the resolution you're working in, the lens flare will always look the same. Next, we will need the LF controls which will let's make it tile so that we can find it better which will contain um, the global parameters for our lens flares and as you can see we have a uh, light position the axis position some multi iris common controls and some for the hoop and let's um, create an lf glow uh, the first thing that you have to do is to drag and drop the controls in the dedicated box. And as you can see, the glow will appear and it will be linked to the light and axis position of our lens flare uh, LF controls. So we have all the controls for our main glow, the secondary glow and the sparkle and as you can see we can change the color of the core of our glow. Let's make this one a little bit blue and less saturated. Maybe this one could stay like so and let's push this one to the red territory and maybe a little bit so smaller and the sparkle maybe like so okay so let's have a look uh, at the next element which would be the star you will have a size control, a size of the star, the angle of your star, the blur, the thickness of the elements of the, of the points of the star, and, uh, of course the color and uh, you can jitter the star, the side, the size, the angle and the opacity and you can randomize it however you want and let's add our glow back okay next we can add the ring you can make it as thick as you would like I like this Maybe something like so. It's already looking nice. Yeah, 
I think so. You also have the control on screen. Next will be the iris. And again, let's have a look at it alone. Let's drag and drop the LF controls. And this is our iris. This one is procedural. So this means that uh, you can create your custom iris by using these uh, set of controls here. And let me show you, you can change the number of uh, sides and the rotation and the starriness. And you can change the color. And if you need this to be much bigger, you can make it as big as you need. And you can change the start and the end um, point of your multi iris and change it in the number of copies. And then uh, let me show you this uh, set of controls here. You have these enable aberration, diffraction, occlusion amount, and occlusion soft. Let's start with the occlusion. If you go back to the LF controls, you have this occlusion control. As I move it, you get the occlusion of the iris, which is something that happens in a real lens flare. And you can go back in the iris controls and add some softness, softness to your occlusion or turn the occlusion off or blend it as you need. Let's make it a little bit a little bit less obvious. And now let's enable the aberration. And if you go back to the um, <coughs> LF controls, you can add the amount of aberration that you want and the diffraction will add some uh, directional blur as you can see. Then you can jitter the position of your irises or you can jitter the size of your iris the angle of your iris and of course the color which is something that I'm gonna do and you can change the opacity the variation of the opacity and of course you have a, a, a random seed here yeah, I think this one looks nice let's turn on all the other controls maybe it's a bit too big of um, let's make it smaller maybe a little bit less chromatic aberration something like so and maybe a little bit more lens occlusion and less softness of the occlusion. Yeah, I think this one looks very nice. Let's add a, another lens, uh, another multi iris control, and let's recall the LF custom control, custom iris. This one will let you uh, use um, bitmaps as your lens element. I have a few here. I think this one would look nice. Let's go into the gamma and remove the gamma. And let's add a luma here. And now let's pipe it into the custom iris. Go in the custom iris, drag and drop the controls. And there you have your uh, custom lens and all that I said about the aberration and occlusion will uh, will um, will affect also all the multi iris controls so let's move this one over here and 
maybe go to two, maybe a little bit less, and move into the blue here. maybe in the size variation let's go smaller less copies here and change the maybe would like to cheater the size a little bit more yeah, something like so yeah real nice I can blur this one a little bit if needed. Let's make this a little bit different again. Let's change the color. Let's cheat the color and maybe also the opacity. And I don't like this one very much. Yeah, something like that. Maybe make this a little bit bigger. Yeah, something like so. Now, something that we can do is actually actually use all of our lens flare as a mask for this custom iris. Let's move to the luminance and this means that when the light will hit the iris there they will be visible as you can see the more elements that uh, we are adding the slower the uh, on-screen refresh will be and that's uh, a little bit unfortunate but I think that dealing with a macro set um, I had to make a compromise between quality and speed and I think this is the best that I could do. Okay, now we can add a hoop and let's have a look at the hoop alone for a second. We need to drag and drop and oops, sorry, and see what the hoop looks like. Maybe let's only add the glow so as you can see we have quite a few controls here we have the ability to enable or disable the auto rotation if you look here the hoop will will automatically scale and rotate and if we disable the rotation it will only scale but keep the rotation as is and this is maybe something that you would like to have as an option and with the, there is this, this enable offset which you can find here and we can actually move our hoop along the, our lens flare okay let's turn everything on so we can better see what happens let's go to the hoop and maybe a little bit thicker and The spectrum will actually make me move inside of the spectrum itself. We can invert the spectrum. Yeah, something like so, maybe a little bit less visible. Yeah, I like this. Yeah, without the noise, I kind of like it. And maybe we can make a little animation here. Okay, so as you can see, we have a pretty nice result, even if it's a very basic setup. 
So let me show you a real world example here. I have these footage. As you can see, I tracked the light. And what I want to do is actually to um, use this uh, lens flare, which is part of the presets that I'm working on. Really nice one. And so let me show you the results. The before and after. And here I just used a probe modifier to make the lens flare appear and disappear. Of course you can use all kinds of modifier on the lens flares and uh, make it more organic, as organic as you can. So let me make this one a little bit bigger so you can better appreciate the result of this beautiful flare. I mean this is not as fast as um, a plugin would be. Think for example of um, optical flares in After Effects that would be very much faster but since this is made in, with macro well I think this is good enough. Uh, keep in mind that I'm gonna release uh, a preset pack very soon which I will be selling for a small price and uh, I think this is a wrap for me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you like it. Uh, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.